Did you say like on ZF? Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, Thomas Love here from beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia and today we're finally discussing together the first photos that link about the Nikon ZF. So thanks to Nikon rumors we finally have the few photos about the shape and the size of this camera that we are all waiting to be announced soon, like in the next couple of weeks, end of month or beginning of September, the latest, and we were all debating what would that look like, like more the Nikon ZFC or more like the Nikon DF, what size, what dimension, what weight, how big is the grip. And so finally we have these few photos that remind me much more of the Nikon FM and FE rather than the Nikon F3 we were all referring to when we think of retro styled Nikon camera. And so we know already enough about the specs, it's gonna have IBIS video 4K 60 and 25 megapixel resolution and a new sensor, newly developed, but not new glasses. And so the first thing that we have to discuss together today is whether it gets along or not with the Z-mount glasses, because from this picture that we see together right now, um, they mounted the 35mm f1.8, and as you can see, it doesn't really get along quite well. So the camera body looks smaller compared to that glass, and the reason why I think that probably the 28mm and the 14mm f2.8 SE version would be a better match for that camera. But apart from that, we see here it's the black version. We were all expecting also the silver or the two colors version. Probably it's coming, maybe not, we would know, but this is the black version we can discuss about and it is quite pleasing. And the size also, it reminds much more the Nikon ZFC than the Nikon DF. Why is that? Because the Nikon DF was a DSLR, so in the size of a DSLR full frame body, while if you go mirrorless, of course, you don't have the mirror mechanism need anymore, and so you can save a few inches and a few dozen grams. And this is the way that they took, at least for what we can see in these photos. Another thing that I appreciate a lot, I don't know you guys, but if you started with film cameras, you don't know what we're talking about, but if you come from the DSLR, you remember you had the thumb and the finger managing the ISO and the F aperture, because those glasses, F mount glasses, didn't have the F aperture on the lens itself, and so, as an example, with my Nikon D750, I was using the thumb and the finger to manage the ISO and the F aperture, which is very common, and it was well integrated within the design of this body, so I'm quite pleased, I'm looking at the photos as we speak right now, so I see, oh, that's a dedicated switch from photography to video, okay, and then we have the dioptrics adjustment for the EVF, okay, great, and then autofocusing, it auto exposure lock in the rear, yes, okay, great, and then, of course, the metering mode, which is the shared button with the magnification, okay, okay, good, good camera factor, good size, and it all comes in black and you have the thumb wheel and the finger wheel and then you have plenty of manual dials to get along with as it is supposed to be in a retro camera. Why am I loving that much the Leica K2 which I'm using right now to record this episode? Because I have all the manual dials that I need. I have the F aperture on the glass, I have the shutter speed and the ISO on the wheel on the top of the camera. Now if you come from film shooting ISO, it was a given back then. It's just a trick in my humble opinion right now, but it's nice to have so you can quickly adjust rather than doing the overexposure or exposure compensation that you have in other cameras such as the APS-C cameras. But apart from that, guys, this size and the specs that the Nikon ZF is having, at least at the moment for what we know from the leaks, put it in the same ballpark as many other cameras. I'm thinking of the Sony A7C Mark II that is also to be announced in the next few weeks. It has more or less the same dimension, the same shape, and more or less the same characteristics, the same specs, because the resolution is 25 megapixel for the Nikon, 35 for the Sony, which eventually helps you crop in a bit more if you're using like the pancake glasses that I think you're supposed to use, because if you take either one of those cameras, the Nikon ZF, I don't see it as a workhorse, 
because there are many other cameras in the same ballpark with the same price level with the same specs i'm thinking of the panasonic s5 mark ii i'm thinking about the nikon z6 mark ii and many other ones but this is really comparable to the sony a7c mark ii one doesn't have the evf of course but it has a better stape and the better autofocusing this one might have all the manual dials that are needed so this is more into photography than into videos but i think that both of them are targeting also travelers so if you want to travel smooth and easy with a small camera it's a mistake that sony is not releasing the r1x mark iii but probably they diverted to the sony a7c mark ii which is overlapping with the nikon zf at least in my humble opinion because guys they have similar specs they have similar dimensions and also a similar price we're talking about two grand or 2500 dollars plus glasses but you can find glasses for as cheap as three four five hundred glasses with auto focusing and i'm not thinking about third party glasses i'm thinking about the official nikon and eventually official sony if you're going for the sony with the nikon zf you are entering the z mount glasses universe which is latest technology nikon could develop they are also brilliant they are also sharp they are also lightweight and good and they are not so expensive right for what you get and so for this nikon zf let's see together you are having manual dials but you're having af tracking and assist as in the latest release cameras from nikon comparable if not better to the nikon z6 mark ii or maybe comparable to the nikon z8 we will never know till the very moment we can go out and try it you are getting a compact lightweight pocketable camera so choose wisely the glass you're using with because you can either use it as a workhorse for your day-to-day -day shooting but if you're traveling you can also go for a pancake se version and with the one lens only do everything you have to do other things to consider thanks to this flippy screen it might be your edc it might be your edc you might using for vlogging you might using for many other things you might use it for videos it has 4k 60p capabilities so why not it's a full frame camera and it has a small grip so i am assuming they optimized the battery consumption in some way because with such a small grip I'm not expecting it to last only a couple of hundred shots that would not be a valuable alternative to all the other brands but if we consider the price point that they're targeting at least the price point at least that was more or less too grand this puts it in the ballpark with many other cameras I think about the Panasonic S5 Mark II I'm thinking about the Nikon Z6 Mark II they all have similar specs they all have similar dimensions and similar prices and similar state and similar glasses because let's face it nowadays there are only a few aspects that characterize the camera brands nikon it has this retro feeling nikon has always pleased me with its color size nikon has always had great glasses for a right price and so if you're going for the nikon zf Please let me know down here in the comment what would be your expectations and if you see something that you like or if you are expecting something else instead so with that i hope you got some value out of this video if you did please remember to like it share it on social media subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any videos to come and i guess i will see you later thank you bye bye